everything in this pile is plastic. Plastic drink bottles, plastic toys, plastic lids, plastic containers, you name it, it's plastic and it's there. Now they might be different shapes and sizes and colours, but they're pretty much made of the same stuff. Plastic. Including this chair. Ugh. Hmm. So the question has to be asked, what is plastic? A hard um, fabric. Plastic is something that can break real easy. Plastic is like rubber, only harder. Plastic is a sort of material that's hard and not that bendy. Material that can be bent without snapping. I wrap my sandwiches in plastic. Yeah, plastic does have a lot of uses. But what is plastic? Well, I've been thinking on it and I have a theory. This is a piece of wood, and wood comes from trees, right? Right. And these are gumboots. Gumboots are made of rubber, and rubber comes from rubber plants, right? Right. So I reckon that plastic must come from a plant that produces plastic. Well, you know, it stands to reason. Cotton, which these jeans are made from, comes from a cotton plant. Potato salad comes from a potato plant. So plastic must come from a plant like this plastic plant here. Let's have a closer look. No baby chairs or mini plates. Oh, I see why. This plant is made of plastic. It doesn't produce plastic things. So bang goes that theory. It would appear that plastic is actually quite a modern phenomenon. 130 years ago, there was no such thing as plastic. And if you wanted to make something, you had to make it out of something like wood, or clay, or metal, or cotton, or silk. Then scientists began experimenting with the different properties of things. By that I mean that every single thing is made up of tiny, tiny, tiny particles. Particles so small you can't see them with the naked eye. Imagine these lollies were particles. Particles of something like wood or clay or even milk. Now milk has lots of different particles and scientists found that they could sort the particles out into their different types to make new things. Actually, milk was one of the first things that scientists made plastic from. And because I am a great scientist, and because I am in the company of great scientists like yourselves, I will show you how you can make your own casein plastic. First of all, you pour one cup of milk into a pot and gently bring it to the boil. One cup of milk coming to the boil. Steam is rising and bubbles are forming. So now you slowly dribble in about 10 teaspoons of vinegar, stirring all the time. begin to form. And when those little lumps form one big clump, you tip the liquid off. with a lump of casing. When it cools, you can mold it into lots of different shapes. Like these casein buttons here. When they're left to dry, they harden. 
scientists make plastic from all sorts of things. Wood, cotton, coal. But usually it's from this. It looks a bit like treacle, but I wouldn't be using this in my cooking. This is crude oil. It hasn't been refined or treated in any way. It's straight from the oil well or oil rig. So you can't get any cruder than that. What happens to crude oil? Well, it enters the refinery to be refined. It's heated and gases are released from the oil. Those gases rise and as they rise, they call at different levels, condense into liquid and are collected. The first substance collected is bitumen, which is an ingredient we use in a road seal recipe. Fuel oils collected next, and oil for lubricants. Diesel further up, and paraffin, and petroleum gas from the top, but just below that, naphtha, the substance used for petrol and for plastic. Naphtha plus heat equals plastic object. Now imagine these chocolate buttons are raw plastic chips. They're very handy in showing you how the process works. The naphtha chips are heated once again. Just like the chocolate, naphtha becomes a thick liquid again. Mmm, that's when the fun begins. 100% chocolate. Liquid plastic can be poured into moulds and left to go into shape. There are two different types of plastic. You get thermosetting plastic, which is forced into the mould with pressure. When it's left to set, it sets like concrete and you can't use it again, that's it. But there's another type of plastic called thermoplastic. And this one you can use again and again. You just melt it down and reshape it. It's a bit like recycling. So, what is plastic? Well, it's a product made of polymers, long chains of molecules, and plastic is usually made from crude oil. When you refine crude oil, you get bitumen, fuel oils, diesel, petroleum, and naphtha. A naphtha you can use to make petrol or plastic. And of course, naphtha isn't really chocolate buttons. I just use those to show you how chocolate can be melted and shaped, just like plastic can be melted and shaped. Now, most plastic items should have a number on the bottom. That tells you what the plastic is that was used to make it and what recycling process you should use to recycle it. Or one and two can be recycled here in New Zealand. Why don't you have a look at the plastic items around your house, see what numbers they have and which ones can be recycled. Maybe you have some questions you'd like answered on Susie's World. You can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307 Birkenhead, Auckland, or email me. My address is susie at treehut.com. Right, I'm off to do some more investigation. See you later. Kakite. Just about everything there is plastic. Well, actually, everything is plastic. And it might be all my Oh, <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. And you're not supposed to do that. Stop! Hmm. It would appear that this book is full of flour. <laughs> Thanks to New Zealand On Air, we couldn't have done it without you.